So I know you guys know, but the subscription economy is going crazy. There is an endless amount of streaming services. Random other things like software are becoming subscription services rather than being able to just buy them outright. And we've even seen companies try to make things a subscription like heated seats in cars with BMW as an example, or Sony potentially adding subscriptions to camera updates in the future. Now in previous videos, I've talked about the rise of the subscription economy. I'll link that right here. And I have also done a video on four free alternatives to the paid streaming subscription model. That was a mouthful. But today though, I wanna focus a little bit on both the mindset shift that's required as well as some of the practical things that you can do so to not break the bank with the increasing subscription costs that we're seeing nowadays. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer, and I'd like to talk about simple living, frugality, and ways to cut down on your technology consumption, sometimes by using other technologies. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I recommend if you wanna not break the bank on so many subscription services is I want you to just take a look at all of the subscriptions that you're paying for right now and really assess, are these things giving me the value that I'm giving them? Subscription costs can be all the way from $1 to maybe even $100 a month, depending on what it is. And it's important to look and see what value am I getting from that product on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis? And is that worth the price that I'm paying for it. People have commented on different subscription videos that I mentioned before. Is a gym membership a subscription? Is rent a subscription? Is a cell phone bill a subscription? Yes and no. I would say cell phone bill we could call a subscription and that would be one that I would suggest that you look at as well. Is your cell phone bill way higher than you need it to be? Previously I was paying like $100 a month for a cell phone bill and I realized I don't need 170 gigabytes of data or whatever I was getting. So I decided I'm gonna cut it down to, I think 50 gigs and I got a special boxing day deal and I paid 35 bucks. So by doing that, I saved $65 a month or about $800 over the course of a year. This could also happen if you have a bunch of streaming services that you've paid for and it's gotten to the point where maybe you forget that you even have one and you're still paying. If you have Prime Video, Netflix, Disney Plus, Crave, if you're in Canada, Hulu, whatever it is, and you're not using all of these services per month, I implore you to take a look at those things, assess which ones are truly valuable to you, and then cut the fat. Now, I know people are starting to think of me as the anti-subscription guy. Like, I have a video on this rise of the subscription economy, and I seem to be going after subscriptions, and I'm not really going after subscriptions. I understand that certain things need to be a subscription model. It's more that I want people to be intentional around your consumption around subscriptions. If you want to use a subscription, at least be sure that you're getting the value out of it that you're paying to that company to have it. There's a few things that I even subscribe to. I usually don't continuously subscribe to something, but I will get a subscription for something for a certain period of time to use it. And then when I find out that it's not working for me anymore or I'm not getting the value that I once was, then I'll cancel the subscription and I'll move on to something else. That's what I'm recommending today for you to not break the bank with these subscription costs. Don't let them pile up. Don't let them snowball and completely get out of hand. Most people probably have one or two subscription services that they're paying for, which they could cancel today and their life would be no worse for it. So consider that and we'll move on to number two. The second thing that I recommend is in the same vein of becoming a little bit more intentional with what things you're paying for. And that is to reallocate the money that you are spending on things that you don't value and put it towards things that you do. One of the active subscriptions that I pay for is actually news media here in Canada. It's a podcast called Canada Land. Canada Land has been around for a very long time. They have several different podcasts on their network, and for $9.99 a month, I pay to support that. They're both a Canadian politics and news show, but they're also a media critique channel, and they focus on talking about where the media in Canada gets things wrong. I really respect what Canada Land does, and I wanted to see them continue to do that work. So by taking that money that I would have been giving to a big corporation like Amazon or Netflix and redirecting it to a smaller, more useful creator, I I think that's the way to go. This is the same thing for something like Patreon. If you support a YouTuber or some musician or other creator through something like Patreon or buy me a coffee or whatever it is. In our world, we have the ad-based model where most people make their money from selling ads. Social media companies, they make their money by selling ads and selling customers data. YouTube, they make their money by selling ads. Most YouTubers make their money by selling ads as well. The fact of the matter is that if we wanna see this ad-based model change, then we 
have to put our money where our mouths are and support the creators directly that we like. Whether that's giving the money to Netflix or Criterion with their streaming service, probably that's better. Or supporting a program like Canada Land or a creator directly on Patreon or buy me a coffee. So that tip isn't really a call to stop spending money, it's more to spend money more wisely, more intentionally making sure that we're putting the money where we want to be putting the money, making sure that our dollars are flowing in the right direction toward things that we wanna see more of, not less. So tip number three, we're moving to the more practical side of things, and that is to choose open source or free options for types of services that would normally be paid through a subscription. So I've talked in the past about things like Microsoft Office becoming a subscription service. I think you can buy Office outright, people have told me that, but it's a pretty obscene price for what it is. People sometimes give me various reasons for why they think Microsoft Microsoft is right for charging a monthly fee for something like Microsoft Word or Excel. I don't really agree. I think that nothing has really changed that much between Microsoft Word or spreadsheets or whatever over the last 10 or 20 years even, that you couldn't just pay for one version, maybe not get any updates included, and just pay $30 outright to get Microsoft Word or spreadsheet or whatever. Because Microsoft doesn't offer something like that, look to free open source options like Apache's OpenOffice. I actually use a minimal, like distraction-free, Apple-based word processor called UFocus, which is also free to get. The point is, is that there's tons of free options out there if you're just willing to poke around and find them. Google is your friend here. Take a look and see what you find. And if you have any suggestions for any good free open source software that you wanna mention down in the comments, please do so. Okay, so tip number four here I have to cut down on your subscription costs is to buy products outright whenever you can. My favorite example for this is Adobe with their Creative Cloud Suite. That thing is far from sweet. It is like $120 to get all of the software that is involved in that thing on a monthly basis. If you're just a chump like me looking for video editing software, software, I would not recommend getting Premiere. Do not pay them that money. The company Blackmagic with their software DaVinci Resolve, you can actually get an industry standard, literally the Hollywood standard for video editing software, and it is available for free. The free software is better than anything you will find in something like iMovie. It is honestly very close to what you would find in Premiere, but if you want to pay to get the full unlocked software, I think that's like three to five hundred dollars, and then you get everything, which is way more than you can get from something like Premiere, in my opinion. I don't need all of the features of Resolve, and I actually really liked editing an iMovie when I was younger, so I ended up moving over to Final Cut Pro X. Final Cut is a great example of a software that if you paid Apple, I think as early as 2013 for this software, you would have got all of the updates that have been released up until now for that one cost that you have paid. This is a time where every company should have followed Apple's lead with this because it's a very good deal for the consumer consumer if you need something like a video editing software. The same is true for Logic Pro on Apple as well. So if you're looking for something with music, that's another great option where you can purchase it outright and then get updates as well for free. Okay, so moving on to number five on how you can cut down on some of your subscription costs month over month is to look into some free alternatives like your local library, a TV antenna, or something like Tubi TV. Now I did a whole video on these options which I will link above right here. I really think that all three of these services are really good options if you're looking to cut down on your subscription costs monthly, but still get some of the newest media available. Most libraries actually have a really good selection of movies, music, and TV shows. So go and check those out if you have it. There's a lot of physical media available to you which you can bring home whenever you want and it's all free. Many libraries also have a streaming service associated with them as well. My library uses something called Canopy which has a lot of good films on there. The Canopy streaming platform has a lot of movies. There are a lot of smart films, tons of things from the Criterion collection on there, but you can also watch TV shows like Alone. I've also done a video on why I choose to use a TV antenna nowadays and I will link that above as well. The antenna that I bought was a cheaper set of Philips rabbit ears that I got on Amazon. It was like 15 to 25 bucks depending on the price fluctuation that we see on Amazon occasionally, but it was a really good price. I paid it one time like two years ago and I've got free television ever since. What channels and how many channels you actually get really depends on where you are. You can use an online signal finder website to see what types of channels and how many you'd be able to access based on where you are. I will link that in the description. I have found that I have 
I've got a really good selection of stuff. When I first lived in my old apartment, I had like 30 something channels. I had American Pickers, I had Pawn Stars, I had ALF, which was most important to me. I had a lot of good stuff. The shows that I get on my antenna are only rivaled by having like a basic cable package. And if you're a cord cutter like me, then you can skip all of that cost. Just pay the one-time fee to get the antenna and you can enjoy TV forever after, as long as it's broadcast, which I hope will be a long time. Tubi TV is another great option, which I only recently signed up for. I'd heard about it in the past, but I really passed it over because I assumed it couldn't really have anything good on it because it's free. But what it is basically is just a regular streaming service with tons of different movies and TV shows and pretty good ones as well, except you just have to watch some ads when you watch the content. The ads honestly aren't that bad. There's not too many of them. I think it's actually a pretty good balance and I think it's worth it to get the quality of shows that you actually get. Okay, so my sixth and final tip on how to not break the bank on recurring subscription costs is to just do something else that doesn't involve a screen. I know that sounds kind of silly. It kind of seems like maybe a weird way for me to end this video, but no, I think it's important to go and try to do something without a screen that doesn't cost you any money. I'm honestly not trying to be super flippant with this. I just think that there's so many good things that you could be doing that don't cost any money at all. So if you are paying out the nose for a ton of subscription services, which are really not benefiting from, consider cutting them and not replacing them with anything. Just replacing them with some good old analog life. Go for a walk, learn about your local flora and fauna, see if there's any free community programming that you can get involved with to meet some people and maybe learn a new skill. There are tons of free analog activities that you can do either alone or with a group that are just waiting for you. Hop online to see what's available in your city or town or ask your neighbor. Ask around and see what you can find. Some of my favorite things to do involve, you know, going for a walk, reading a book, playing some guitar, making some YouTube videos, just any kind of good old fashioned free fun. The reality is, is that there's tons of fun things to do here in reality. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Just a mix of six mindset shifts as well as practical changes that you can make to help not break the bank so much on subscription costs. So what did you guys think of this video? What practices are you guys putting into place to help cut some of the subscription costs? How about a good old free activity of something you enjoy doing? Something that may even erase your need for a subscription cost? Let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.